Cyprus is an island steeped in legend and bathed year-round in the golden light of the Mediterranean sun. It is at once a modern country and a compact world of alluring beaches and fragrant mountain peaks, ancient ruins that stir the imagination, citrus groves and old stone villages. A place where a sense of timelessness is magnified by the big-heartedness and hospitality of the people. An eventful past, 10,000 years long, has seen civilizations come and go. And the likes of everyone, from Alexander the Great to Cleopatra to Venetian nobles, all stake claim to Cyprus. Aphrodite made her home in Cyprus, and travellers throughout antiquity came here to pay tribute to the goddess of love and beauty. Cyprus, an independent republic since 1960, is the third largest island in the Mediterranean with an area of 9,251 square kilometres and a population of 760,000. It's said that if you were to launch a little sailing boat from the shores of Greece, the current would bring it straight to Cyprus and that this is the reason why Mycenaean traders had already colonized Cyprus from the time of the Trojan War. Although two and a half thousand years have passed since then, not only do ships continue to arrive here from all over Europe and the rest of the world, but Cyprus's unique geographical location has today made it an ideal base from which to explore the neighboring countries in this fascinating region of the world. Three local cruise companies operate very reasonably priced two to five day cruisers in comfortable cruise liners. On these, you can visit Egypt, Israel, Lebanon, Syria and the beautiful Greek islands. Egypt. This cruise includes a classical full-day shore excursion from Port Said to Cairo, where you can visit the world-famous museum with its treasures of ancient Egypt and the magnificent finds from the tomb of Tutankhamun and other pharaohs. The next stop is the Giza Plateau to see the pyramids, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and the mysterious Sphinx. There is of course time for shopping in the bustling bazaars. Israel. In this cruise, the land excursion will take you from Haifa to a pilgrimage in the Holy Land, which includes visits to the revered places of Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Lebanon. The shore excursion begins with a tour of the cosmopolitan city of Beirut. You will visit the city centre where centuries-old tradition combines with modern architecture in the vast rebuilding project. Next stop is Byblos, the oldest settlement in the world, where there's a fascinating combination of ancient ruins and a colourful bazaar. The excursion continues with a panoramic tour of Junier and a visit to the church of the Lady of Harissa, located in a mountaintop 600 metres high, with spectacular views. The last treat is a visit to a traditional Lebanese sweet shop, where you can taste and buy local delicacies. Greece and the Greek islands. During these summer months, May to October, there are two-day cruises to Rhodes and longer five to seven-day cruises in the Aegean. The itineraries are varied and surprising and include calls in such famous islands like Rhodes, Mykonos, Santorini and lesser known places but equally captivating. Today's Mycenaeans, those travellers whom a favourable wind brings for even a day to one of Cyprus's ports, 
have a unique opportunity to see legendary and historical places of world heritage close up. So from Limassol Port, if you have only three hours available, you can first visit the medieval Crusader Castle at Colossi. It was built by the Knights of St. John, who produced Comandaria from the surrounding vineyards and exported it to Europe. Afterwards, further west, you can see Curion, one of the ancient city kingdoms of Cyprus. Here you will see beautiful Roman mosaics of the early Christian era and the ancient theatre, while nearby is the sanctuary of Apollo. Should you have a further three hours at your disposal, you can head for Paphos. On the way, you'll come across the most famous beach in Cyprus. It was here that Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, was born. According to myth, she emerged from the foam at the seaside boulder called Petra Turomiu, Aphrodite's rock. In Paphos itself, which was once the ancient capital of Cyprus, you can walk around the picturesque harbour and fort. Close by are the famous mosaics of the houses of Dionysus, Ionus and Achilleus, depicting scenes from Greek mythology. Here too are the tombs of the kings. Your final stop in Paphos has to be St Paul's Pillar. Incredible as it may seem, all of this, the pine-clad Trodos mountain range, just an hour's drive from Limassol port, has the same origins as Aphrodite. It rose up out of the sea. The Trodos area contrasts greatly with the rest of Cyprus. Here you'll find peace and quiet and clear mountain air. The villages, monasteries and churches, scattered on the hillsides and among the valleys, all have their own story to tell. Ten Byzantine painted churches here are on the World Heritage List and have been declared protected monuments by UNESCO. One of the villages that you could visit is Fini, famous for generations for its pottery. Nearby is Lanya, which is known as the Village of Artists. Both Omodos and Kilani are picturesque villages known mainly for their wines. Kakopetria, famed for its traditional old houses, is one of the island's most popular hill resorts, together with Platres. There's always the possibility that you won't leave Lemosol or Lemesos at all. It's the second largest town in Cyprus and it's a great place for shopping, in particular for leather goods, pottery and jewellery, as well as for sightseeing. Near the Old Port is the medieval castle which now houses the Cyprus Medieval Museum. Just outside Limassol to the east are the ruins of ancient Amethyst, one of the island's ancient city kingdoms. From both Limassol and Larnaca, Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus, is less than an hour away. From Limassol, you have the chance to break your journey at its halfway point and visit the archaeological site of Hirokitia. This is one of the most impressive Neolithic settlements in the world and is also on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Nicosia, or Lefkosia, a modern European city with a cosmopolitan look and a population of around 200,000, with its old town built within 16th century Venetian walls, is known as the City of Museums. First among them is the Cyprus Museum, which houses the island's richest archaeological collection. And don't miss the Cyprus Handicraft Centre. Apart from these superb examples of folk art on display, you can actually watch potters, weavers, jewellers and woodcarvers at work. You'll find shops selling handicrafts, works of art and more in the Laiki Hitonia, the so-called popular neighbourhood within the walls where restored houses and shops recall how the town was in a bygone era. If you're travelling from Larnaca port, you can take more or less the same route as you would from Limassol. 
to the east, Ayanapa is very close. This is Cyprus's leading tourist resort, full of luxury hotels and places of entertainment, but mainly known for its superb beaches, its clean white sands and crystal clear waters. If you stay in Larnaca, you have a chance to see a celebrated church, that of St. Lazarus, which was first built in 800 AD. As well as an important Muslim place of pilgrimage, the Hala Sultan Teke on the shores of Larnaca Salt Lake. Near the port is the marina, the famous promenade lined with palm trees, and the main shopping area nearby. If you feel like just a short trip out of Larnaca, you have at least two excellent choices. You can visit the beautiful Byzantine church at Kitty Village, whose name Angelochtisti means built by angels, and which has some superb mosaics. Or you can go straight to Lefkara. The village itself is built in a very pretty traditional style from local stone. And here an excellent local dish is prepared in clay pots and old style ovens. Don't leave without trying it. And once you've tasted it, you'd better leave at once or you might have the same fate as the Mycenaeans. They also stopped off here for a while and in the end they stayed forever. <laughs>